Today I'm going to talk about performance monitor counters. If you are troubleshooting SQL Server performance, you must have definitely heard about these counters. Whenever we talk about performance monitor counters, we tend to go to the Perfmon tool, which comes with Windows operating system. And as a developer or DBA, we launch the Perfmon tool and then we add counters and there are just so many of them which are under um, your SQL Server instance and, and you know there are objects and then the counters. And then we tend to analyze them either by number or uh, using the graphical user uh, interface. Uh, and you can see real time statistics uh, with these uh, counters. Uh, the Perfmon tool is nice. It gives you the plotting. Uh, you can see a bar chart, you can see line plots, so on and so forth. But uh, I have seen with my clients, sometimes uh, database administrators and developers will not have access to the Perfmon tool, uh, which is on Windows. So on production environment, it becomes uh, gets difficult to monitor the values of these counters. And let me tell you, these uh, counters, some of them at least are really good. Uh, you can get uh, some very important information from these counters, which uh, sometimes is not available or is available with a lot of difficulty from inside SQL Server. And now you may know that in SQL Server, there is a DMV, SysDMOS perf uh, counters, and using that DMV, you can actually uh, get the values of these counters, the same counters that you see in the Perfmon tool, um, and you can uh, analyze them. But when you run uh, a simple select star from that DMV, all you will see uh, the snapshot and the value of those counters at that point in time when you ran the DMV. So I am going to show you a technique now on uh, how you can use that DMV, the output of that DMV, store it in baseline database, run it frequently. And of course you can then uh, you know do plotting and charting and that data set is as good as uh, you know the Perfmon tool where you see the graph. If you wish to stay connected with me, you can subscribe to this exclusive distribution list, Connect with AB. Members of this distribution list are people who have watched my videos or read a blog or even attended pre-cons or a session at a conference. And I also have uh, members uh, from all my master classes in this distribution list. So yes, uh, this distribution list is pretty exclusive. The link is available in the YouTube uh, description. You can also follow me on Twitter, A underscore Buns. Also, please be aware that every year in Bangalore, in India, we organize a very large scale data analytics and artificial intelligence conference called Data Platform Summit. If you wish to learn more about this, log on to www.dps10.com or just drop a mail to contact at dps10.com. This is a conference where delegates from more than 20 countries join us annually and we get close to 1500 attendees. Uh, we deliver more than 100 sessions across three days and more than 20 pre-cons on three days. So this is a whole week of learning from Monday to Saturday and one of the signature tech events in Asia. Microsoft experts, MVPs, MCMs, and industry veterans from more than 16 countries join us. So if you're really serious about building a career in data analytics and AI, and if you wish to learn from experts and your peers, this is a conference. This is a learning event that you should not miss annually. Action time, let's jump to demo. Let's get started with the demo. I am going to use the DMV, uh, select star from sys dm underscore os underscore <clears throat> schedulers. So this is um, a DMV which I don't see quite often in uh, troubleshooting uh, scenarios. I mean, I don't see developers DBs using this one quite often, but this has some good information that uh, you can use in your uh, troubleshooting um, uh, endeavors. So let's go and execute this. Uh, you can see the scheduler address, uh, the scheduler ID. Uh, this one is important uh, for you. These are uh, internal use, and that's why you will see that there, they say that uh, status as hidden online. Uh, I have eight cores right now here, so you can see the scheduler ID from zero to seven on my laptop. And um, let's go and look at some important columns. So as I keep scrolling on the right, a uh, lot of data, just like any other DMV. And this current uh, task count is uh, important for me. Uh, as, as of now, when this DMV was executed at that point of time, each of these schedulers has 
uh, these many tasks uh, scheduled uh, on them. That was the current task count. Uh, this column is important, runnable task count, which is uh, how many tasks are currently in the runnable queue, which means they are ready to run, but they have not got uh, a scheduler assigned to them. So they are kind of waiting. Uh, they're not waiting for any specific resource. It's just that they are waiting for their turn on the scheduler. And thankfully, there is no pressure right now on SQL Server. And this is what I mean by pressure, which means my runnable task count is all zero and SQL Server is sitting pretty happy and healthy. Um, as we keep scrolling uh, down, there is uh, another one called current uh, workers count, which is the number of workers that are currently there on each uh, scheduler. And the work queue count is also zero, which means no task is, uh, no thread is really waiting for a worker to get picked up. Uh, so this is also good. And then there is another one called pending disk I account. So that's also sitting nicely at zero, uh, which means I right now at this point, there is no disk pressure as well. Now, when I look at um, uh, these columns, these are pretty good columns and a simple query can be formulated, uh, uh, which you can use in your uh, monitoring purposes. So I'm going to use pending disk I account, work queue count and um, let's say current um, current task count and runnable task count. So let's go and look into this and get some um, columns out there. So first, maybe I can uh, use um, average of um, the, sorry, current task. So let me do this one. I will uh, take, let me take, current uh, task count as um, one of the columns and then I will take um, runnable task count. This is important for me. Then I have the work queue count and then pending disk IO count. So what I can do is I need this across all the uh, schedulers, of course. So I can just quickly get an average of them and Let's take an average of these fellows and just let's call this as average and I don't need the current there average task count and I'm showing you how I generally formulate uh, these um, queries and most DMVs are not uh, as meaningful in sense if you just simply run um, if you just simply run them with select star, you just need to make sure that uh, you write a meaningful uh, query. So we got the runnable task count, average uh, runnable, runnable uh, no, I should, okay, I should make it runnable task count, that was perfect. And then I will take an average of work queue count as well, average work queue count as, average work queue count and then we'll take the average pending discount a simple query and you can always baseline uh, such queries in sense you can periodically record this data which is not really very difficult you can make a baseline database in another video i would try to show that also to you and from schedulers and we should make sure that where our uh, scheduler ID is less than 255 because I want to uh, get rid of those uh, other hidden ones that are used for internal purposes. And now let's go and execute this. And you can see that the average task count is seven and we, we're pretty nice at uh, zero, zero, zero because there's absolutely no pressure. And now what I will do is uh, run some workloads. So let me go back and try to add a few users in the system and let's go and execute this. And you will see that this count will increase and you might see some values around here. So let's go and run this. And now you can see that average ta task count has increased. So at that point in time, across my eight cores, we have a total of let's say 19 tasks running and about 11 of them uh, waiting uh, in the queue. Uh, the code that I'm running does not really do much of IO. So you can see these ones as uh, empty and the tasks that picked up, but they're waiting in the queue for a scheduler 
to be assigned to them. If you see consistent high values with task count and uh, you know runnable task count, even for worker queues and uh, pending disk IO count, I mean more than let's like, say five or ten on on a consistent basis, which means uh, that is that a system needs investigation. Maybe you need to add more CPUs or you need to add more uh, IO. Uh, a consistent high value would mean that SQL Server is under some kind of pressure. So this is what I meant by monitoring uh, SQL Server pressure by observing the task count. Back to the slides. Hope the demo was worth your time. My name is Amit Bansal and I have been working with SQL Server since 1997. Over the last so many years, I have worked with more than 200 customers around SQL Server performance tuning, consulting engagements, training and content development. Overall, I must have delivered more than 600 assignments and probably trained more than 10,000 uh, SQL Server professionals. I am a Microsoft Certified Master of SQL Server and also a Microsoft Most Valuable Professional Awardee from Microsoft. Apart from my professional work, whenever I get an opportunity, I speak at global conferences, uh, including our own Data Platform Summit, Ignite, TechEd, SQL Bits, and Pass Summit. On community front, I spend my time with DataPlatformGeeks.com and SQLServerGeeks.com, and I help build communities, and I also help uh, organize a large-scale conference called Data Platform Summit. And you can see a few pictures from our last year's conferences. More than um, 1,000 people uh, join Data Platform Summit each year from more than 20 countries. Microsoft product experts from Redmond, India, China, Israel, Dublin, uh, MVPs from more than 16 countries and industry veterans, they deliver more than 100 breakout sessions, open talks and chalk talks at this conference. We have exclusive learning formats like even roundtables and hands-on labs. And um, if you're serious about Microsoft Data Platform and SQL Server and the complete Azure stack, this is a signature event that you should not miss. You can visit dps10.com to learn more about this conference, which has been promoted even by media and uh, online websites as one of the largest community-driven learning events of Asia. Well, then thank you very much for your time for uh, watching this video. I hope to meet you again soon in another video.